as we prepare to sell our house and move into the van full time to do traveling throughout the United States, I'm doing some maintenance on the engine, has 280,000 miles on it, original. And when I became a mechanic, I was taught that PCV valves, that's positive crankcase ventilation valves, were maintenance items. And I think that's because they were small and cheap. Uh, oftentimes on Ford GM Chrysler's, they were smaller than this and quite cheap. And you could sometimes replace them without even any tools. They just sat inside the valve cover. But as time has gone on and they've integrated crankcase breathers or positive crankcase ventilation systems into valve covers, they've become less and less serviceable or at least cost prohibitively serviceable. The question is, do they still really need to be replaced on a regular maintenance interval? One of the big conflicts at big automotive companies is that they want to keep cost of ownership down. So there's actually employees working within the company who fight with the engineers to say, do we really need to change the brake fluid every three years? Do we really need to replace this? Because as soon as we start recommending to customers that they do that, we have to then advertise to some extent and report that our cars are more expensive to maintain. So there's this conflict within the company. And I know this because I worked at Wolfsburg, uh, world headquarters for Volkswagen for three years and with the company for 17 years, there's this conflict where the, the engineers, you know, the intention, the engineers would love to replace this thing every, you know, two years. But uh, the cost of ownership guys say, no, 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 no. Customers are going to think our cars are expensive to maintain and um, we're going to have all these trips to the dealership. So let's not do that. Anyhow, let's talk about crate case ventilation systems for a minute in case you're not familiar with it. And I have an engine here. This is a two-stroke, but that's beside the point. I can illustrate what I want to illustrate. So as you go up and down the piston, uh, as, the, as I should say, as the piston goes up and down, when it gets to the top of the power stroke, excuse me, top of the compression stroke, beginning of the power stroke, the spark plug fires and the expanding gas has pushed the piston down. Now in these grooves here, the piston has rings which seal so that that pressure is not lost. However, there's always some gas that slips past the rings. And the reason for that slippage can be seen here. This is a four stroke piston out of a tractor, lawn tractor. And you can see that there are three grooves. The top ring is the top compression ring. The middle is the middle compression ring and the bottom is what they call the oil scraper ring. And you'll notice that these rings uh, have a big gap. Now that gap becomes quite small when you put them inside the cylinder, but you need that gap for a few reasons. One, for installation. Two, the ring actually rotates in, over time so that it doesn't get seized up and stuck. So you need a little bit of movement. But what happens is a little bit of gas slips past the upper portion of the piston, the cylinder or the combustion chamber, and gets to the underside. And the underside is where all of your oil is. So when you have a dipstick, the dipstick goes in and checks the oil level in this area. <clears throat> in fact, this little prong here on this is actually meant to stir up and agitate the oil because there's no oil pump on a lawn tractor. It's just um, splash oil. Anyway, that's beside the point. So what happens is on the underside of the piston, which would be here, you get all of these combustion gases that basically slipped past the piston and need to be um, excavated. And you could just vent them to the atmosphere uh, that's the simplest, most rudimentary solution, and that can be done, but it's A, uh, not that great to pollute the atmosphere with those things, and B, you're losing on a small benefit, and that is you could use those gases. So from the crankcase, which is the area underneath the piston and in the valve cover, you always, on, an auto, on, a, on a modern day vehicle, since, I don't know, the 70s or 80s, you have what's called a positive crankcase ventilation valve. And so you can understand what this valve does, it vents, ventilation, the positive pressure building up inside the crankcase, and it routes it back into the intake manifold to be burned. So when we take this example of a Honda Odyssey 3.5, you can imagine how the system works. The PCV valve slides into this valve cover here. Now, it's maybe obvious to you that the area underneath the piston where the dipstick goes is actually the same cavity or vessel as here where you take the oil cap off. You take the oil cap typically off of the valve cover. So even though this space right here doesn't have any oil in it, it is connected and sealed to the same area underneath the crankshaft where all the oil is called the crankcase. Now that valve goes in there and you'll notice here from the intake manifold, 
you have a vacuum hose running to the valve cover. Now, if you cut this, you'd have a massive vacuum leak, the engine would run terribly. And so what you have is you have intake manifold uh, vacuum or low pressure, to be more specific, sucking on the valve cover. But you don't want all of it sucking on the valve cover because then you'll start pulling out um, oil. That would be really bad. And if you're going to pull vacuum on the crankcase, you have to have a fresh air vent. Otherwise, you'll pull the crankcase into a vacuum and uh, you'll basically, you well, not literally, you wouldn't collapse it, but you would be trying to collapse it. And so here you have a fresh air vent. So what you can imagine, the engine starts, because the throttle valve's closed, you have vacuum in the intake manifold. It's like someone sucking on a straw super hard. That vacuum goes here, vacuum goes here, starts pulling air out of the valve cover, and this valve regulates how much it can pull because it doesn't want it to pull too much. As you pull vacuum on the valve cover, you need to supply it with fresh air, and you do that through here. So filtered air, and then it goes right here. So one of the purposes of the positive crankcase ventilation system and valve is to regulate that flow. So if this becomes stuck closed, you'll have insufficient flow, and if you guess it, if you get stuck open, it becomes excessive flow. And because the engine oil is mixed with exhaust gases, essentially, and some fresh gases, this stuff gets kind of nasty. It gets a little cruddy, and it can seize the valve that's in here. Now, I'm not certain that this valve is seized, although I do have some oil consumption, so it would be awesome if it was seized, because I would explain my oil consumption. Nonetheless, this is just a few dollars, one 10 millimeter screw, so I'm going to replace it. Now let's cut this open and see what's inside so you understand it, and we'll see if mine happens to be seized. I've said this before, but maybe not on this channel. One of the best things you can do if you're a new mechanic is take stuff apart. You won't get paid to do it, but you'll understand how things work, which will make you better at diagnosing things. All right, let's get this open. All right. Sometimes you have to cut things open a few different times because you ruin them because you don't know exactly where to cut. That could be the case here. see there we go all right so there's this valve and that's really the only moving part in here all of the rest is just the housing which is used to connect the different spaces so here's the valve most valves are spring-loaded although not all of them and it's a little bit difficult to decipher how much of this sludge is from me doing that just now and how much was already there. Let me blow this off with some compressed air real quick. And I did it very lightly to hopefully only blow away the plastic bits. So what you have on almost all valves is a sealing surface. In fact, that's the definition of a valve is something that can open and close and seal off one compartment from another. So this seat here is of utmost importance and it's corresponding seat inside of there, which I won't be able to see. Those things matter greatly because if crud builds up on that little seat, then it can no longer seal and it allows it to flow more often, which could lead to oil consumption. Now, the other thing is if this spring, which in this case it's fine, if this spring had gotten all gunked up and it was stuck in an open position, then that would also lead to excessive flow and likely excessive oil consumption, although I can't say that's guaranteed on every single engine setup. So anyway, I'm going to be replacing this today. Positive crankcase ventilation valves, not to be concluded, not to be confused with PVC pipe, PC valve, positive crankcase ventilation systems. Uh, check to see if your engine has one, if it's been a long time since it's been replaced. Again, many consider this a maintenance item, and it's worth just replacing as long as it's not integrated into the valve cover and costs a couple hundred bucks. All right, folks. Well, I hope that was mildly interesting to some of you. A little bit of theory, a little bit of practice, and a live demonstration of how to cut open a piece of plastic. Have a good day. Take care.